in the book of Alma, there are some pretty clearly defined borders between the Nephites and the Lamanites. It's pretty obvious to tell who your enemy is. You open up the book of Helaman and two things happen. It shifts from these well-defined borders, well-defined enemy to you're not sure who, you, who, who your enemy is anymore. He could be standing right next to you and you didn't know it in, in the book of Helaman. So the two adjustments that the devil makes is, number one, he becomes more sneaky and more subtle than ever before in the Book of Mormon, but this is done internally among the Nephites through what we're going to uh, be talking about today with the secret combinations. The, this enemy that is among you, that they're not wearing a uniform, they're not on their side of a border, it's, you just, you don't know who they are more sneaky and subtle internally, and he becomes more bold and brazen externally. So the Lamanites come in here in chapter uh, 1, my good friend Rex Reeve pointed this out to me, and this is amazing. For the first time ever, the Lamanites, they don't come to the outer cities, they come in quickly, while the Nephites are distracted internally with some problems with secret combinations, and they bring their army right into the capital city. First time in the history of the Book of Mormon where the first attack is they sneak their way in and boom, hit the capital city and take over the, that city, kill the chief judge, and then keep driving further to try to get to the land Bountiful, where they're finally defeated. This is the point. Um, as we get farther and, or further and further into time towards the second coming, we're going to see our world mirroring and, pat and following this same pattern. And the farther into time we get, the, the less we're looking beyond our borders to worry about fighting against evil, and the more we're trying to figure out where all of the struggles are, not just externally, but internally and that's kind of where we're headed in, in this book of Helaman. So Kishkumen comes to, to do the same thing he had done to Pahoran before, but the servant of Helaman saw him, recognized him somehow, had had enough knowledge of what was going on, gave him a secret sign, he shared his desire, and at that point uh, Mormon pauses here to give you a nutshell definition of what it means when we say secret combinations. Look at verse 8. This is the simplest nutshell definition I can, I can find for secret combinations. Notice what's involved. Number one, when the servant of, of uh, Helaman had known all the, of the heart of Kishkumen and how that it was his object to murder, and it was also the object of all those who belonged to this band to murder, and to rob, and to uh, gain power, and this was all done in secret, not out in the open. So Taylor's talking about sacred covenants versus secret combinations. This is how Satan does his work, in the dark, in the corners, under the cloak and the guise of, of uh, disguise, secretly going about to murder, to kill other people, to rob in order for him to get gain, to gain power and to gain things. Notice, and this was their secret plan and their combination. That's exactly what Satan did in heaven, in the premortal uh, war, and he hasn't changed his strategy in all these years, in all the interim. He's still, still trying to secretly destroy each of us to steal from – to rob from us, rob life, rob agency, rob everything from us in order for him to gain power over us. Secret combinations are alive and well.
in, in many levels and in many layers today. And uh, you then watch he the, the servant kills Kishkumen, and then Gadianton finds out that or is scared that he hasn't come back in time, so they flee before we can destroy that band. And look at verse thirteen. Behold, in the end of this book ye shall see that this Gadianton did prove the overthrow, yea, almost the entire destruction of the people of Nephi. 